Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Monday, June 10th, 2024 by Gaia Blooming. I'm Mimi and our energy mantra for today is I take the time to nurture my awareness. And over the weekend, we had Mars shift into Taurus. And this is an interesting placement. So in traditional astrology, there are placements where planets are considered to be in their fall or their detriment. Um, and this is one of them. <laughs> Mars and Taurus is considered that. However, I am, I am glad about it. Uh, I think it's helpful in this astro. Now, the way I look at astrology is that all planets in any sign has its positives and has its negatives. It has its challenges and it has its places where it can excel. What I love about Mars and Taurus, especially right now, is that this can be some really grounding energy. This can help slow us down a little, recalibrate, rebalance. And I think that's really good with all of this Gemini energy going on. So I'm really grateful to Mars and Taurus for that. It moved in late late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. So you may have felt a little bit of a shift. I actually felt it a little bit before then. It felt like a very sleepy, calmer weekend after this last week, which had so much frenetic Gemini energy. And it felt to me like just the beginning of Mars hanging out in the Taurus energy. Now, what can be a challenge is Mars is passion. Mars is aggression. Mars is action. And Taurus is not really that. And so that's why there's a little bit of a challenge here. Mars and Taurus doesn't know how to express its anger or frustration and will either eat its way through it. I'm getting a picture from that movie Bugs. I don't know what that caterpillar, but I'm getting a picture of the caterpillar from the movie Bugs. Um, <laughs> Bugs Life. Bugs Life. That's what it is. Um... That can be very Mars and Taurus energy because it doesn't know how to move the energy through. Now, another thing that came through for Mars and Taurus, which is made me laugh, um, there's a quote that's like, run as hard as you can towards, like, God. And if somebody can keep up, like, keep them around, right? And I was like, Mars and Taurus is that energy. It's like, run as hard as you can towards, like, what's good? What's pleasure? What's, like beautiful to you. Run towards the good. And then I was laughing. I was like, well, maybe not run. <laughs> maybe not run with Mars and Taurus, but you know, walk leisurely <laughs> towards, towards God, towards good, towards that which draws you. Um, that was a cute squeak. <laughs> Thank you, Taurus. She's like, yeah, I will be, I'll be leisurely walking towards my food bowl and then tell you what I think about its contents. Mars and Taurus. Um, <laughs> where was I going to go? Oh, one of my favorite Rumi quotes is, uh, what is it? It just left because of distractions. 15 minutes. Counting down. Mm. Oh. Let the beauty you love be what you do. There's hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. I knew I could bring it up just to center a second of silence. This is very much an energy that involves like the Libra, involves the Taurus. And just know there's so many ways that you can act towards good, act towards God. Invite your inner light, invite source, to run, to move through you. And I think that that's part of the calling with Mars and Taurus. Again, there may be some frustrations that Luce is now voicing <laughs> um, that could come up. And while it's not impossible to move them through with Mars and Taurus, it may not work the way you usually want it to. And that's where, again, the frustration will be like, Arr! usually I can go like, Arr! and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm better. It actually might take a little bit more patience. It might be not so much erratic movement. It might be more utilizing breath. Um, some somatic work, like 
rolling around in soft postures, yin yoga, all of these things could maybe ring out some of the frustration, some of the energy, should it come up. And as we kick off Mars in Taurus, we do have a frustrating clash between Mars. I do my own sound effects now. Um, I'm so talented. Uh, between Mars and Pluto. We have them squaring off on Tuesday. Tuesday the 11th, early in the morning. And that square is going to bring up again that energy where even Pluto retrograde in Aquarius is like, oh my gosh, could we get to Utopia? Could we figure it out, humans? Like, could we just get there already? Come on, humans, empower yourself. Love wins. It's all good, right? That's what Pluto's saying. And Mars and Taurus is like, whose voice is that that I'm hearing? I'm definitely hearing... A male, I don't know, male voice. I don't know who it is. Um, but it's like, I don't know. It feels very Star Wars-ish in my head. But it's like, patience, Pluto. We still have lessons we have to learn. It's very slow and a little bit, a little bit proper, the voice <laughs> Mars and Taurus is giving. And so... We feel that challenge within ourselves. We feel that frustration where the soul is like, I know where we're going. We're going in this direction. And there's parts within ourselves that are like, can we just get there already? We have lessons we have to learn. And they are taking their time. And there's always a reason for all the time that it takes. But you may feel some of those things arising, whether it's about the world in general, about your vision, about the future that you're longing for, about... The seeds that you've planted, Mars and Taurus is like you want to give the flowers the time to grow. You want to bake your cake fully in, in the oven. You don't want to take a cake half baked out because it is not going to taste the way you want it to taste. It is not going to feel the way you want it to feel. We need to let the things take the time that they take and that is frustrating. The now versus the future and yet the now has beautiful flowers and it has delicious cakes and so many things to offer and so leaning into the beauty that is now that's part of Mars and Taurus and trusting the beauty that is now will lead to future beautiful flowers and future future beauty and you get to water water the life that you want at this point so there's we are there we are with that now adding to the complications we have the moon in Leo now the moon in Leo is today actually as I'm recording this um, working on an opposition with Pluto and working with that square of Mars um, but the moon in Leo it can go either way it can feed the impatience because any fire sign can feed the impatience or it can find the play and it can find the joy in the moment. Now I think today there's a good possibility of finding the joy in the moment as the moon in Leo is being hyped by Mercury and Gemini. Now this hype isn't going to be happening till later in the evening, but Gemini is such a cheerleader for Leo and vice versa. Um, and so I think that there's a possibility for joy, especially if you make it your mission to be radiating joy, expressing joy, and recognizing that it will show itself back to you. So watch for the rising frustrations because they are going to be there. But there's also a high quotient of joy, especially Mercury and Gemini, Gemini, if you are willing to express the joy that you are experiencing or you want to experience or that you can see as a possibility in the world. And I think it always benefits us to express the joy, the possibility, the hope, and the love that is. Even in a complicated world that we live in right now, that always is. So let's look at these cards. Very interesting cards. Very, very interesting. Top of the cards, we have the traveling card. So dropping off some baggage and some of the baggage that we're dropping off may be some of our own impatience and frustrations and even the usual way we deal with it and rather slowly letting it drip into our body and slowly process it, whether it's through like breathing or something else. There's multiple ways we can release these energies. And I think Mars and Taurus, even though it's in 
in detriment can help us move these energies through in a different way. Maybe it's grounding. Maybe it's getting outside and talking to the trees. I highly recommend talking to trees. So today I've given you planet voices and, you know, advice to talk to trees. So speaking of talking to trees, hmm, we have the friendliness card. The trees are very friendly. They are so helpful. They give advice much better than most humans. So, you know, reach out to your friendly neighbors, the trees. They see and know everything and they have such a good network that they can connect to all the other trees. So um, we have a nurturing card and that was our energy mantra today to be nurturing our awareness. And maybe your awareness today is the voices of nature. And this might be part of your experience of Mars and Taurus as well to experience voices in nature, experience the wisdom of nature and how it can support you on this earth walk. So nurturing, nurturing creative energy. Moon and Leo definitely brings creativity. Your inner child loves talking to the trees. Let your inner child talk to the trees. The final card we have is the breakthrough and any and all of this can lead to breakthrough for you. And I love this card because there's a big great heart opening up and that's part of that Moon and Leo as well. Opening up into the heart and I love that Again, bring it back around to Mercury and Gemini connecting to the Moon and Libra today. Moon and Libra. Moon and Leo today. Expressing the heart. Expressing joy. Expressing love. There's always opportunities for that. So, I'm going to leave that here for today. You can book a reading. Email me, mimiclark at gmail.com for that. And the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you. You have the power. And remember who you are for you are a lovely and beautiful solution. Namaste.